I fell in love with a Kmart, which which just shows like the small town in me, right? Yeah. Like blue light she, special, honey. My buddy Anthony's like, let's go visit Carrie. She's working at this Kmart in, in Draper, Utah, and we stop by. She's got her stupid red vest on. <laughs> but I was just like, she's awesome. I'm like, I could, I'm, I don't know for whatever reason, I fell in love with her that day, and and uh, now admit it. Money could be complicated. Let a nerd help you. We're here to demystify the complex nature of money by getting you answers from financial nerds and whiz kids. Welcome to Ask the Money Nerds, a weekly segment of the Wealth Labs podcast where we answer your most pressing money questions. If you want to buy real estate, well, where should you store your money for those down payments? How do you protect your money, have tax advantages with that money, and still have access to it quickly when the right deals are available? Pretty straightforward right there, Stolba. Mm-hmm. Very <laughs> yeah, straightforward. Like, look right. I was like, not ready for you to be done with the intro. No. <laughs> Here we go. You're used to me being long, long-winded? Yes. Okay. Short-winded is a rare occasion around here. No, I'm kidding. I was quiet after my surgery I just had. Yes, you were more quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't around you much, so I didn't experience the silence. No. <laughs> um, you know, a 26-year-old rode in. Nice. What were you doing when you were 26? Running the business back then. Mm-hmm. I started when I was... Uh, I started the first version of Wealth Factory, which was called Ingenuity, I think in December of 2000. Mm -hmm. So I was living in Hawaii, teaching and running a or being a part of an organic gardening program for students in their school. Was living in Hawaii what it was cracked up to be? Or was it less convenient than you thought? Well, I didn't really go in with a lot of expectation, but it was, it was really nice to be able to have the mountains and the ocean and that is pretty cool. Yeah, it was gorgeous. Which island? I met fantastic people on the island of Oahu Mm -hmm. and I'm still in touch with them today. So it was a nice little season of my life. Did you go to the North shore a lot when you're on Oahu? I did. And they have this really popular, um, surfing competition it's in honor of Eddie a cow. Um, and like, you'll see bumper stickers around that say Eddie would go. And it's very rare that it happens because the waves have to be a certain height and they're gigantic. And it just happened to be the year that I was there that the surfing competition went on. And so you'll have surfers that will be watching reports and they'll drop everything, fly in. (laughs) And like the traffic going up to the North shore is one way. There's not multiple lanes, at least when I live there. And so you have people that are just riding their bikes up there to get a spot on the beach to watch these pro surfers surf these gigantic waves. And I just remember sitting on the beach in awe because the sound of the waves rolling in was nothing I'd ever heard being on the beach before. So it was a really cool experience. Um, But that's what I was doing when I was 26. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So George... He's the 26 year old entrepreneur that wrote in. He says, I'm single with $85,000 plus in savings. Nice. um, And I'm saving 10,000 every month. I own a multifamily home and other real estate and will be continuing to invest in real estate. I'm interested in investing in a whole life insurance policy. My question is, am I able to borrow against the policy for real estate? Mm -hmm. Would investing in an overfunded whole life insurance policy be a wise move to make for a single entrepreneur investing in real estate? And FYI, you've actually met this person. He said that um, there's a YouTube video from the Underground Summit. Mm-hmm. Um, where That's the one where it looks like I'm like speaking at a speakeasy or something. There's like a cool background. Yeah, he asked you a question there about nice. paying off his student loans and he's back here on YouTube asking you a question about whole life policies. So I was single when I bought my first policy, my first couple policies. Um, I don't even know if I was dating my now wife when I bought the first one because mm-hmm. I was really young. I was, well, I think I was like 19, so I definitely wasn't dating her just yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, you hadn't made the trip to Kmart to visit I her. might have known that I le- like, yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> I fell in love with a Kmart, which, which just shows like the small town in me, right? Yeah. Like Blue light special, honey. <laughs> my buddy Anthony's like, let's go visit Carrie. She's working at this Kmart in, in Draper, mm-hmm. Utah, and we stop by, I just got her stupid red vest on <laughs> but I was just like she's awesome I'm like I could I'm, I don't know for whatever reason I fell in love with her that day and and uh, now admit it you know mm-hmm. so yeah but <laughs> I feel like when I go into REI and I see them wearing the green green vest I could fall in love with any of the bearded guys in there yeah at REI was it the vest 
or was it her? It was just like she was on a break <laughs> and she was just uber like laughing and like just cool and happy that we were there. And I was like, ah, she's pretty awesome. I like her energy. You do? So, you think she's all right? Yeah. I like her positive energy. That's probably what you're picking up on in Kmart. She's got a dark sense of humor, which I like too. She laughs at all your dark jokes. Well, that she you laughs write. at things sometimes that I don't want her to laugh at. Like, you know, <clears throat> in the one man show, I have the line that says where she tells me I'm an extraordinary businessman. Mm -hmm. Well, like I do that play so often and practice so often that I just like to throw little things in here and there. Mm -hmm. And so I said, and she said, Garrett, you're an extraordinary lover. And she just bust up laughing so hard that <laughs> it, I'm still kind of broken by it. Like it was hurtful. It's like, that shouldn't be that funny. It should be like a little funny, but like when you she laugh that is. hard, it's hurtful, honey. So yeah. That is funny. I don't even know where we're at. What are we talking about? I mean, okay. I know that there was a question from the underground and now he's asking stuff about this uh, uh, the real estate. policy and being yeah. single. And I was mentioning being single. Sing so there's the train of thought. And then that led me to men that work at REI. We just yeah. totally got off So the big track. thing I would have him measure is like, how quick is he going to need the money? And how long does it take to get this high, high cash value available? But absolutely, mm -hmm. it's something that you can... The earliest you could probably get it in your account is 48 hours. I would count on like more of a 72 hour mm -hmm. type of process when you're trying to access cash value. Mm -hmm. And it's based upon how much cash is in there is how much you could access. But I used it for real estate like crazy when I used to do real estate. Mm -hmm. I decided I enjoy life <laughs> in a different way than doing real estate. It wasn't the most enjoyable phase of my mm -hmm. investing career. But yeah, do you have any advice? Like how do you how once he gets his policy established and he's ready to take money out of the policy, like, can you walk us through what the process looks like to pull mm -hmm. money out to invest it in real estate and then make sure that it's the money's put back into Dep the policy. Yeah, it depends eventually. on the company. It could be you do a phone call, answer a few security questions, and then they send it if it's under a certain amount of money. If it's over a certain amount of money, you're typically going to fill out a, some paperwork. It might be a page, two pages at mm -hmm. most, and then you send it in. And they can either overnight that, but that overnight still is after processing. That's why the earliest you would see it in is 48 hours. Or they can wire it back to the account where you make the premiums. Mm -hmm. So it's relatively fast that you can get that. Okay. Um, so I, I used it for the first time I ever developed something. I developed a fourplex that I bought the land. I used cash value to do the initial purchase. And then, you know, that, and then I did get a construction loan eventually, but I've used it to buy a lot of uh, tons of down payments came from my cash value. It's super easy to get to yeah. it's long term. It's going to do much, much, much better than a savings account. And it does, it has tax protection that a savings account doesn't, it has, you know, liability and bankruptcy mm -hmm. protection that it doesn't have. It has additional benefits. It has guaranteed interest rates that are higher than that or dividends that can enhance it even further. So it's a great place to, to do this. Um, absolutely. Now he's single. So he's saying, well, do I really need a death benefit? Well, whether you need it or not, I don't know, but if you're healthy now and you eventually get married, well, now you have it already secure. It's in place. You've been using it as a, a bank essentially that now happens to have a death benefit. So you don't have to buy term insurance if you decide to do that later on. Yeah. But even if he decides, okay, well, never gets married, stay single. Um, the death benefit can still benefit him. Mm -hmm. So in what would billionaires do? I have these little chapters on buying net worth instead of building it yeah. and then building cash flow. Mm -hmm. So buy net worth, build cash flow. So the death benefit becomes kind of like future net worth. Like it's money that's going to come into mm -hmm. your state. So why not utilize that knowing that it's going to come in eventually mm -hmm. to enhance cash flow today? Yeah. So for example, if he's got real estate, he might be able to use a charitable trust to sell that real estate or donate it to a charity, get a partial tax deduction, mm -hmm. sell that real estate, pay no tax on the sell of it, and then get an income off of that full amount inside of the trust while he's alive. The charity keeps whatever's left over when he's dead, but the death mm -hmm. benefit could come back in if he does have heirs at that time. Yeah. Right? Okay. Or That's next level. Yeah, maybe having a bunch of paid off property, he could use the death benefit as collateral to unlock that equity through like a reverse mortgage when he's older, that would be tax free. The death benefit would pay that back. So the properties wouldn't be in jeopardy. So there's, okay. there's ways the death benefit could benefit him, even if he's single, mm -hmm. um, especially maybe there are really charitable things that you'd like to have happen. It could be great. Mm -hmm. Just the fact that there's cash value is awesome as well. And I think that's his bigger play here. So it's gotta be with the right company. It's gotta be overfunded properly. I would definitely go to cashflowbanking.com to have them analyze the different companies and options and opportunities there. Mm -hmm. Want to continue the path to be a better investor? Make sure that you're not losing money and taking too much risk. We'll click here and learn about strengths vesting.